there, I'm Kinsey and this is School Teacher. So my goal on this channel is to help you learn about languages and cultures. And today, I thought in order to do that, I would share with you my experience from the Arabic class I took. And hopefully, maybe you can take a class like this, or if not, you can learn from my experiences, what I liked about the class, what I didn't, and apply those to your own language journey. So good luck. So you might be thinking, how did an American girl like you take a class in Arabic? They do not offer these at school. It is actually a special program with the National Security Language Initiative. It's a program for the youth. It's with the State Department of Education and it's a cool like national program that they offer in the United States for high schoolers, American high schoolers, who learn languages and there's also study abroad programs. That's mainly what it's focused on, but there are some virtual like online classes and that is what I took. How I first heard about this program was from a friend and we both ended up, yes, getting in and accepted. So this is a merit-based scholarship program. So yeah, we both got accepted into Nisli Y, into the winter 2020 virtual program. I was really happy when I got accepted because I don't know what your chances of getting in or not are, but I mean like, it's a free program. So it's awesome to get in. So I wanna tell you about the process real quick. So basically, you have to fill out this very long and intricate application. That is basically, like, since you're not paying to get in, they look at these applications, like, how dedicated? How do you want this? Are you a good student? Do you work? And, like, all these different things, and you even need, like, a recommendation. It's almost like an application for college, in a way. I have done that, y'all. I got accepted into a college, y'all. Okay, but anyway, back to the application process. Anyway, it's long and it's hard, but y'all, it's worth it. I was so happy because I got my first language and the days, my first choice of days. And my choice was Arabic. My second choice was Mandarin. If y'all know me, you know I love Chinese and I still wanna learn it one day. But I'm glad that I'm focusing on Arabic right now. I think that's gonna be useful to me more immediately. And I'm gonna learn Chinese later down the road. But yes, I'm glad that I got into the Arabic and then I was in the Wednesday, Saturday class. Okay, so now I wanna tell you real quickly about how the class was set up and how it all worked. There were different classes depending on the language. Some languages had more, I think Hindi, maybe Turkish only had one class. But each class had about 10 students and one teacher. And basically, I think a lot of the material and structure of the class was actually up to the teachers. But all the classes met two times a week. We met for an hour and a half each time on Zoom. At the beginning of the course, we got a little package and it had all the supplies we would need for our class. Okay, I'm back and I have the stuff. So this is what I got in my package. So this is a Nisli Y t-shirt. I love it. And green is my favorite color. And yes, it has the big emblem on the back and everything. And then I got a my Aleph Ba book, which is, was the textbook that we used. And when I actually got it and looked through it, I was a little bit disappointed because it seemed like very basic stuff. But the teacher used this supplementally. We didn't do, like, honestly, y'all y'all can see. We did not do very much of this. I did maybe, like, it's kind of sad how little we did of it like five or six pages maybe at most it was basically in the beginning to have something to practice writing i don't know honestly i can go back and still do a lot of this stuff but it's very basic stuff and so we moved on from that pretty quickly but it is nice to have a little resource for you and in it was a 
I'm not sure. A little money from, I forget, Central Bank of Yemen, that's where. So yeah, a little Yemeni's money. It's cool. Probably not much, but it gives you an experience. And y'all makes me want to go to Yemen. I also got these cool stencils, which I made a video about the Islamic art. I put on my art Arabic binder, which I'll link in the description, and y'all should totally watch that. And I also got a falafel mix, but I ate that, so I can't show you. I'll link that video in the description as well. So, at the beginning, we had like some alphabet practice and stuff, but she kind of tried to balance culture with language, and because she wasn't just teaching us the Arabic language, she was teaching us about Arab culture. And to me, that is really cool. I didn't realize how important that was until now. It's like, really, when we're studying languages, we need to be studying cultures. Wait, is that what this channel's all about? <gasps> That's amazing! So, it's kind of like broken up into those different parts. Oftentimes, we, she played a song for us in class. So there was a whole bunch of different things. It's hard to explain it all, but I'm doing my best. After we learned the alphabet, which took the first few weeks, I mean, we learned words along with the alphabet, but after we like completely learned the alphabet, we kind of like, you know, we got better. We kind of focused more on vocabulary. And so we would learn some vocabulary words. She would have little PowerPoint slides with the word and pictures usually. Oftentimes the English word wasn't even there, which was kind of cool. Sometimes it was. And sometimes there still were the transliterations, which is kind of nice. I personally didn't like it, but it can be helpful when the short vowels are not written on the Arabic, because then you're like, I'm, I can't, I don't know how to pronounce this. But yes, she did a great job at teaching us and I loved, I loved it. So then after we would learn some words, oftentimes she would have us use them in a sentence and like build sentences and stuff. And there was just so many fun like games and class activities that it was very interactive. And that was good, honestly. I think yes, all classes should be interactive. And especially language classes. So yes, I could blabber on all day about this, but instead of doing that, I'm going to tell you about my favorite parts and then my not so favorite parts. And so you can get a good idea of what my Arabic class was like. Okay, y'all, first and foremost, my favorite part was my teacher. She was so amazing. She's the best language teacher I've ever had. One of the best teachers I've ever had, probably. And I love, like, I loved the amount of immersion she used because obviously she did not completely speak in Arabic the entire time with us Americans who barely knew any Arabic because it was a very basic class, right? But after a few classes, she would just like randomly ask us a question in Arabic and see if we could answer. And sometimes we would all sit there Nobody would say a word because we had no idea what she was saying. But so many things we learned because of that. And also she would just use Arabic words as she was talking and stuff. And little things like naam and tafadali and different things, shukran, just incorporated that into it. So even though we weren't actually having the whole class in Arabic, we still got immersed in it little by little. And that was super cool. And then also I loved the lack of emphasis on grades. She didn't care if you did a good job, she cared that you tried. Okay, so one time I sent in, I was connecting the letters and I sent it in and I got a mistake. She showed me what it was and I fixed it and I got a hundred. She really cared so much about us learning and understanding. And that is what I love. When teachers genuinely care about whether their students are understanding, learning, and able to produce what they're teaching them, that just melts my heart. And so yeah, she did an amazing job at that. And also a great advantage I think I got from this class was hearing it so much. Because she did speak it, she repeated the vocabulary over and over and different things like that. 
I got to hear a native speaker saying these words a lot. And so then it was easier to pronounce them correctly. And we got pronunciation practice and stuff. But just hearing that so much, it became easier. And I think I learned Arabic more by hearing than I have any other language because I've never had a teacher. I've never had a native teacher. And a teacher that yeah tries to incorporate words and vocabulary and stuff into the life and the lesson so much. So yes, that was awesome. Then, oh, this is so near and dear to me. And I think an incredibly important thing in language learning, sentence building. After we learn those vocabulary words, she would have us build sentences. After we learned all the restaurants, vocabulary and food and whatnot, she had us pretend like she was the waitress and we were ordering at food for our entire family at an Arabic restaurant. And that sounds overwhelming and it kind of was, but she's like, okay, take like five minutes, write down the sentences of what, who wants to order. And then we took turns and she would ask us the questions that waiters normally ask and we got food. No, we didn't actually get food. But we did it, and if we needed help, she didn't help us. But <laughs> we were able to create that in our minds. We weren't just copying down the sentences we had learned. We were making our own sentences and using them in a situation that we might come across one day. And that is amazing. And then I have one more favorite thing, and that was guest speakers. We had four guest speakers. And I loved them all. And it was just so cool to hear from like, yes, these native people from different Arabic countries and what their lives were like. And to me, honestly, I don't know if I learned all that much Arabic from them, but I learned life lessons. And it made me realize like, yes, we need more guest speakers in school. Like we need to hear about people's lives, learn from them, and also be inspired. They speak this, these languages and like this has got them here in life and this and that. And I don't know, I just, I enjoyed it so much. And it was so cool. Those were my favorite parts. Now for my not so favorite parts. Okay, so the first one would be the lack of emphasis on writing. I'm not saying she didn't tell us to write. There weren't writing exercises. But my second thing is I just, I felt like my classmates were falling behind. And I liked the kind of quick pace that we were at, but I had also had some experience with Arabic and language learning, and it was good for me. But I didn't like that by the end of the course, some of my friends still didn't know all the letters of the alphabet and couldn't read or write that well, and that bothered me. So yeah, I don't really know. You can't have a class that's perfect for everyone, obviously. But I think maybe those fundamentals about reading and writing do need to be emphasized more. And also the lack of participation in class. Not that we didn't have any, but oftentimes not that many people were willing to participate, whether that is for they fell behind and didn't know the answer or they were just too shy. But yeah, I didn't like that because when no I'm fine not answering every question, y'all. But when nobody answers the question, I want to answer. But I don't want to be the note all that answers it every single time either. And finally, she's just like, okay, Kenzie, put your hand down. And it's just like, oh. And it's just like, oh. Sometimes we would have to sit there for minutes on end, being silent, waiting for someone to answer. And I do like that eventually someone did and you know, we got there, but it just, it took a while. And I wished I had maybe a bit more of an eager class. I don't know. Okay, y'all, the next one is connection issues. My teacher lived in Egypt and one time there was a storm and our entire class got canceled. I don't even know how many times. In the middle of class, she would her screen would just cut out and she'd be gone and we'd be in class all alone doing nothing for like 10 minutes and that was kind of boring and a waste of time technology can fail you sometimes and yeah that's sad and also just 
technology in general because y'all I'm horrible with technology. There were so many th times in class where I like couldn't participate in an activity just because either I didn't know how to do it or my my computer couldn't do it or this or that and I was just like ah. Like I didn't miss out on all that much and it was probably fine that I didn't answer a few questions but like we made it work. It was just kind of annoying that like I feel like the bad thing about online classroom settings is that n sometimes students get lost and don't know what to do and it's hard. I made it though y'all. I survived and I learned more about Zoom. One thing, the upside to having a native teacher is she's always going to know that like the native word she's not going to be like oh, I don't know that word. But the downside is sometimes she didn't know it in English. Sometimes her English was a little off. And you know, honestly, that didn't bother me quite as much as sometimes she didn't understand English grammar. And I think we all want a teacher that like thinks like us. Having a teacher that's overly grammatical bothered me and having a teacher that's under grammatical bothered me because sometimes I wanted to have that like, so this is the infinitive form of this and if this is a noun and this is a verb is this the adverb or an adjective and stuff like that and it's not like she had no idea but sometimes she's just like i don't know and i'm trying to understand it but if your teacher doesn't understand how english grammar works it's harder for them to explain the foreign language grammar so that is that but i I think overall it was really good. It's okay, but savvy. There's no perfect teacher out there. Technically, the perfect teacher is yourself and you just have to go and teach yourself, okay? And I'll say the last thing that I did not like was I feel like after the class, we just kind of fell off a cliff. I feel like they didn't prepare us to continue studying and studying on our own very well. I can survive since I'm used to studying languages on my own and obviously I kind of did fall off the cliff and not practice as much but I'm getting back into it but I think that some of my classmates and like the, all the other kids too that are used to getting hand fed are not going to know what to do are not going to be able to figure out how to feed themselves and you know I think if they really want it they will but it's just hard but we will survive Whoa. Okay, I just want to clarify, I'm not at all trying to be negative, I loved this class, I'm just trying to give you an authentic view of what Nisli Y was like for me, so if you're considering taking it, you get it all, figure it all out, and obviously some of that stuff is going to be different depending on the teacher and stuff, but I will tell you one thing about Nisli Y as a whole, uh, virtual and in person. You gotta be patient because it takes a long time. They may not respond to your emails. You may not know exactly what's happening, but you gotta be patient and just hope it works out. It's not perfect, but you can you can get there, okay? Sorry y'all, I didn't mean for this video to be so long, but I just wanted to tell you about my experience. Nestle White offers you an amazing experience for free. That is amazing. Take advantage of that and enjoy it if you ever get the chance to. But also I think it is important to realize there is value in like having a teacher. Like you can't teach yourself everything. And I think online tutors can actually do a really good job as I found out. And there are different places you can find one. You know, italki, I've heard of Cambly. There's just, there's a lot of different ones. You can look it up. And like find one and obviously those are probably are not going to be free they're not they're not going to be free you can do it i just want to encourage you you can learn a language it is possible sometimes i feel like i'm never going to be able to speak arabic like what it's crazy but i am i'm going to practice hard and i'm going to get there and i want you to come with me so let's go y'all so real quick i just wanted to show you my little diploma thingamajig here. Oh, well, I'm so proud. I did it. I completed it. I got an A in the class. I was an amazing student. <laughs> I enjoyed it. So have an amazing day. Please subscribe to my channel if you want to be inspired, learn a language, learn a culture, travel the world. I don't know. We'll see what happens. And I'll see you in my next video. Masalama!